Let me. Yes. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay. Got it on the presenter mode. Okay. So today we are going to be wrapping up our drug class kind of lecture series. Um, and today I'll be going over integrase inhibitors. So over the last several sessions, we've go, gone over nucleoside um, reverse transcriptase inhibitors, which are kind of our backbone of therapy. Um, so it's traditionally, it's always been two nucleosides plus a third agent. And we've talked about the other quote unquote third agents already. So we've talked about the non-nucleosides. We've talked about the protease inhibitors. So today we're going to talk about the integrase inhibitors. Um, so some relevant disclosures. I have served on Gilead and um, Thera Technologies Advisory Board. Um, and then we actually have a Aviv research um, project going on here. And so I'm our research pharmacist. So those are just relevant disclosures. They should not impact anything that I have say, to say today. Uh, learning objectives are kind of going to be similar to what we've done over the last three um, sessions. Is going to be ident identify individual drugs within the integrase inhibitor class. We're going to discuss the current use of the integrase inhibitor class, which, spoiler alert, they are the mover and shakers of the guidelines. So um, this is really where most new patients are going to end up. And then we're going to talk about adverse effects and drug interactions through the individual drugs. And as I go through, I'll talk about the different combinations that integrase inhibitors are um, involved in because most of them are involved in um, multiple um, combination products. So um, just going back over drug um, mechanism of action, especially since we have a medical student with us. So um, HIV enters the um, cell through entry. Um, we, so we have entry inhibitors. Reverse transcriptase um, works to um, convert I HIV's RNA into DNA, which is then integrated into our DNA. And so this is where the integrase inhibitors work um, to stop that step. From that step, they um, are moved out and um, are, they bud and make mature virons, and that's where protease inhibitors work. So we're going to talk about the integrase inhibitors. So from a historical perspective, um, you know, I've kind of started every one of these series kind of talking about the history. Remember that in 1981, um, AIDS was first discovered in the United States, but it wasn't until 1987 that we had our first drug, and that was Zydovidine. Um, which is a nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. The 1990s gave us a lot of different medication classes, um, and it wasn't until um, late into the early 2000s that we actually got our first integrase inhibitor. So Raltegravir was FDA approved in 2007. Elvitegravir was FDA approved in 2012 as far a part of its combination product of Stridold. Um, 2013 gave us Dalutegravir, and 2017 gave us Bictegravir. Um, and then hopefully in the next year or so, we'll also have cabotegravir, and I'll talk about that more in detail um, in a few slides. And we'll talk about kind of all these combination, how these all work out in combination as well. So here's our available integrase inhibitors. So we have raltegravir, which is brand name Isentris. We have elvitegravir, which is co-formulated um, as either part of Stribild and Genvoya. Elvitegravir is the only integrase inhibitor that requires pharmacokinetic boosting. So when we talked about the drug interactions from protease inhibitors and the pharmacokinetic enhancing effects that those bring, um, L-vitegravir has very similar drug interactions because it also requires pharmacokinetic boosting. Dalutegravir and Bictegravir came next. Um, Dalutegravir is co-formulated um, in a lot of different um, formulations. It's by itself as Tivike, but it's also with Abacavir and Lamivudine as Triumec, as in a three-drug combination of two nucleosides plus the integrase inhibitor. Jaluca is um, a two-drug combination, as is Dovato that has Dalutegravir in it, and then Cabonuva, um, again, is the future, and we'll talk about all these combinations. Bictegravir, again, is our newest integrase inhibitor. Um, I'm sorry, Cabonuva, I don't know what I was thinking. Cabonuva is not Dalutegravir, it's going to be Cabotegravir. Um, I was working really hard this morning and took a cut that. So hold that thought. If you made notes, scratch out Cabonuva under Dalutegravir, and we'll come back to it. But Bictegravir um, is our newest um, until Cabotegravir comes out, um, co-formulated with Bictarvi. From a molecular standpoint, Dalutegravir and Bictegravir um, are very similar, and Cabotegravir will also be very similar. And so when I talk about things with Dalutegravir um, with pregnancy, I also think of them with Bictegravir as well, well, because we just don't know enough about Bictegravir, so, but they are chemically similar. So let's start with raltegravir. Raltegravir was originally um, given as a dose of 400 milligrams twice a day. Um, it now is available as a high dose that you can give once daily, um, and then, um, but it still has to be two tablets. Raltegravir is not co-formulated into um, 
a single tablet regimen. So you do have to add additional agents. So um, it would add your requirement of your additional NRTI backbone. So uh, the A1 recommendation in the guidelines is that it's with TAF or amtricitabine. Um, the great thing about raltegravir, it has minimal drug interactions and adverse effects are also very minimal. Um, it's probably one of the cleanest integrase inhibitors that we have, um, and they're all fairly clean. The one thing you do have to worry about raltegravir and all integrase inhibitors, so this is going to be throughout the lecture, is you have to watch out for cations. So it will chelate if taken at the same time. So um, raltegravir, so calcium, iron, magnesium, any of those um, chelating effects um, we want to be careful about taking it at the same time. So that's true of any of them. Moving on, l is co-formulated, um, is either Strybild or Genvoia. So the difference between Strybild and Genvoia from a brand name standpoint is Strybild has TDF, tenofovir disaproxyl, where Genvoia has TAF or um, tenofovir alafenamide. Um, both are boosted, have boosted cobacistat in there for the l boosting, um, and then both have amtricitabine. It was recently removed, no longer preferred for initial therapy, but it still is on the guidelines. Um, and it was preferred for a long time, so we actually have quite a few patients on it. Um, again, requires pharmacokinetic boosting. So when you think about drug interactions of protease inhibitors, um, I also put l vitegravir into that same category. You're gonna see similar drug interactions. So statins are problematic and you have to you know, watch your doses. Steroids have to watch your doses, um, et cetera. Um, you do need to take l vitegravir with food. Um, and so sometimes if I see a patient lose biologic control, um, I often ask them if they are taking their stride or than Jordan Boyle with food, because that may be one of the re reasons why they're not getting appropriate absorption. Um, so dolutegravir. So dolutegravir has data in both treatment naive and treatment experienced patients. It's been a very um, well studied um, integrase inhibitor. Um, and so its dosing is going to be 50 milligrams daily or BID, but most of the time it's going to be daily in a naive patient. Um, they also have some pediatric dosing, but um, I do not deal with pediatrics, so I will not pretend that I do, so I will not speak to those doses. Um, but they do have, um, and, and, mo and many of the drugs do have data. Uh, I was just thinking about it because in our EMR, it often wants to, um, when it's been pulling over with our new EMR system, it's been pulling over a lot of Tivigay, 25 milligrams, and I've had to remind the residents to go back and make sure that they're giving the right dose. So 50 milligrams daily is the treatment dose for naive. You can do 50 milligrams BID with certain drug interactions. So rifampin is a big one um, that you would have to do twice a day. Or if you have um, known mutations, so what you'd have to add in. So um, again, look at the package insert. There are certain mutations um, that are very rarely seen. Um, I think we only have one or two patients on 2 k 50 milligrams BID um, to give you kind of an idea of how many patients we're doing. Um, that, but, but it can't, it has been shown to be used in um, integrase inhibitor experienced patients, patients who have treatment experience that may need like a salvage regimen. So um, to the K50 milligrams BID. Um, watch for drug interactions. Again, cations, the same as all the others. Um, other than that, again, dolutegravir like raltegravir is fairly clean. Um, next. Um, so dolutegravir co-formulations, and again, I don't know what I was thinking. My next slide contains errors, so I'll just talk through that. Um, I love how Maren's laughing at me. I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking this morning. I was just off in la-la land. Um, but dolutegravir co-formulations. So we've already talked about triumec, um, dolutegravir, abacavir, and lamivudine. Because triumec has a abacavir in it, it does require HLA B5701 testing, and that needs to be negative before you continue on. Um, Triumec is still considered first line in the HHS guidelines for treatment naive patients, but again, make sure they have negative HLA testing. The other thing you would want to make sure that they have negatives, they want to make sure you have a negative hepatitis B, um, because in that case, you don't have the two agents to treat hepatitis B. Um, so those are the two requirements for Triumec specifically um, that you want to make sure you're good for. Jaluca is dolutegravir plus rolpivirine. So rolpivirine is a non-nucleoside. Um, does require to be taken with food. Jaluca is only indicated for switch patients. Um, so it does not have um, recommendations or studies in treatment naive, but can be used in um, treatment experienced patients. Um, and the, the FDA guidance here is that they are undetectable for at least six months. Um, Devado is dolutegravir and lamivudine. It originally got indicated for naive patients only. 
um, and apparently my slides didn't update on this because I remember, I do remember doing this. Um, it now has um, indication for naive and switch therapy as well. So again, you want somebody undetectable doing well, you can put them on um, two drug regimens. So Jaluka and Dovato are kind of this paradigm switch for HIV therapy. For years, we've been doing two drugs, um, three drug regimens, two nucleosides plus a third agent, where Jaluka and Dovato are kind of pushing into that um, and saying, are two drugs enough? And the answer is, yes, it seems as so if you pick the right two drugs. So um, dolutegravir lamivudine seems to be good for both naive and switch patients. Dolutegravir rolpivirine, um, good for, um, for switch patients only. Um, Devado is first line in the guidelines for naive patients, but again, make sure you aren't giving it either Jaluka or Devado to a hepatitis B patient, because again, you do not have the two agents that are needed to treat hepatitis B. You only have one in the case of Devado and none in the case of Jaluka, because well, maybe you will treat, but you need an additional agent. Um, and then for Devado, it's not um, advised to use it with patients that have a baseline viral load over 500,000. Um, and that is because um, they just didn't study it that way. Um, would it work? Maybe, but they didn't study it. And so um, the guidelines came out and basically said, since you didn't study it, this is the, the cap we're gonna put on it. Um, so Jaluka and Devado kind of are the lead in of the two drug regimens that push in to, um, to Cava Nuva. And so this is where I made, ah, oh, that's what I did. I didn't, didn't, I moved, I didn't, I moved, I tried to move Devado and I didn't. Obviously coming back from a long weekend has really done great jobs for my slides, guys. Um, but, so Cava Nuva, not Dolutegravir, that's an error. Um, this is Cava Tegravir. Has not yet been FDA approved, but it will be Cava Tegravir plus Rilpivirine as a long acting injecting, injectable. Um, I suspect it will get FDA approved first as Q4 weeks. Um, so every four weeks, the patient gets two injections that are gluteal, um, but there is some data about every eight weeks. So hopefully we'll be seeing some data about that. Um, so I apologize for the errors in my slides. Um, I was trying to update my slides really fast this morning to get them into NISI and um, obviously it was still half asleep while I was doing it. So Cabanuva is gonna be Cabotegravir and Rolpivirine. Again, hoping to get FDA approval sometime within the next several months. Um, COVID pushed it back for several, several months. Um, the last integrase inhibitor we'll talk about is Bictegravir. So it's co-formulated as Bictarbi with Bictegravir, Tenofovir, Alafenamide, and Tricitabine. So it's only available as a single tablet regimen. Um, it's also available in first line in the guidelines. Again, drug interactions with cations. Um, it is a smaller pill. So patients that are worried about pill size, um, Bictarbi seems to really work really well. Um, and you can also use it for your Hep B patients. So I know I've talked a lot about don't use this for Hep B, don't use this for Hep B. Um, anything that has tenofovir and antracetamide in it, you can use um, with Hep B. And so Bictecrabit would be an appropriate um, agent um, combination if you needed that. So adverse effects across the board um, are pretty similar. Um, their integrase inhibitors are very tolerated. So even the patients that have these, they're either rare or they're pretty mild. So um, insomnia, um, and I've seen both insomnia and fatigue, so sleep changes. Um, and I just tell patients to change the time of their administration if it's all possible. So if they're having insomnia and they're taking it at night, try to take it in the morning. Um, if they're taking it in the morning and they get fatigue, take it at night. Um, and most of the time people switch that up and they do really well. Um, headaches um, seems to respond well to over-the-counter medications and goes away within the first several weeks of being on medications. Um, nausea and GI upset are rare with the integrase inhibitors. It's very rare that I have a patient complain of that. Um, depression and suicidal ideation, ideation, probably worse with your um, sec, quote unquote second generation integrase inhibitors, so your dolutegravir um, and your bictegravir, and we'll kind of see with cabotegravir where that lays out. Um, but it's, it can, it's usually uh, worsening a pre existing condition. It's very rare. I've only seen it a couple of times, but I think it is something to be concerned about uh, if you have a patient with um, depression. And then weight gain. This one is still being um, diced out in the literature and we don't know, um, we don't know really what effects um, are playing into it. Is this certain people with certain genetic types are more likely? Um, does TAF play a role? We think it does, um, but, but what does that look like? So, and for weight gain, Raltegravir may be the best. Um, and again, it seems that your second generation, Spictegravir and Dolutegravir are the worst. Um, and this is a significant weight gain. You're talking about, you know, 
10 kilos over six or so months. Um, so a very significant weight gain for your patients. So um, again, I can't tell you how to predict it um, or um, best ways to handle it because that's still being diced out in the literature, but I think it's worth mentioning because um, it does seem to be more and more um, confirmed that there is weight gain. And again, tenofovir alafenamide may be contributing to that factor as well. So summary, drug interactions are minimal. Again, think about things that can chelate. So calcium, magnesium, aluminum, iron. Um, l does require cobacystat for appropriate boosting. So think about your drug interactions from that standpoint. And we've already talked about all of these, um, but things to keep in mind. So protease inhibitors, that conversation holds as well. Um, so in summary, the guidelines recommend integrase inhibitors across the board for first line naive patients. Um, it is an integrase inhibitor world. Um, all of them require no food exception with the exception of l um, and they're all tolerable. So um, really this is kind of where we go to first is the integrase inhibitor class when we're looking at a new patient. So with that being said, are there any questions? Okay, very good. Thank you, Dr. Connell. Does anybody have any questions or comments for